Understanding Grand Seiko's broad collection of watches is best done by having a grasp of their three primary movement pillars. One of the three is their proprietary technology known as spring drive, which is revolutionary for its combination of being self-sufficient with its mechanical power, while also delivering quartz level accuracy with the absence of friction compared to a mechanical watch, leading to one of the most impressive movement developments in the last century. To get into a trailblazing innovation though, it costs money. But today we look at currently the most attainable spring drive powered watch on the market, the SBGA 465. The story of spring drive is one that began all the way back in the 1970s. The early foundational research showed the plausibility of the concept, yet given the technology limitations of the era surrounding integrated circuits and improving power efficiency, it led to many trial and error efforts for years. It would eventually take over two decades before the first workable prototype for the spring drive was able to be presented to the public, with its official unveiling happening at Baselworld 1999. Since its gradual rollout, the spring drive movement has become one of the most widely used innovations from Grand Seiko, spanning a variety of complications and tiers within itself. At the core of the modern spring drive collection is the 9R65, a three-hand power reserve date movement that can be found inside many GS models, including the topic of today, the SBGA465, a model released in 2022. Now, given the title of this video, I feel it's probably the most appropriate to discuss the movement in more detail first. One point as an owner is that you are not given the view of the movement. Instead, the screw down case back is in stainless steel capped off with the Grand Seiko Lion Medallion. Yet behind this protective shield is the aforementioned 9R65. When the original 9R series calibers started becoming available in the 2000s, they were revolutionary. And although I have an entire video explaining how the spring drive works, it's important to establish why this movement is so remarkable to fully appreciate this watch. Both mechanical and quartz watches have their own issues that create hurdles in the engineering process. In the case of mechanical watches, it benefits greatly from being able to be self-reliant on an internal power source from a coiled up mainspring. However, the constant friction that can take place between components, especially in the escapement, can be troublesome and can shorten the service interval as a result. Further, mechanical watches also have the difficulty of having to counteract the adverse effects of gravity on the oscillating balance spring. So in other words, the variety of positions interacted with daily can also lead to additional challenges in maintaining accurate time. These difficulties are not too much to overcome, but they do add additional hurdles in the assembly and adjustment process. Then on the other hand, quartz movements are sensational for being more accurate and are less impacted by shocks and position changes, and further are not as vulnerable to friction given its oscillation coming from a piezoelectric effect, or in more straightforward language, an electrical charge to a quartz crystal rather than the sliding pallets interacting with the wheel teeth on a lever escapement. This all considered, quartz watches have their own downsides, probably the number one being that they are reliant on an external power source in order to operate, hence why the most common service request for watches is a battery change. And secondly, quartz movements have the ability to be produced in large quantities and rarely, apart from 9F calibers from Grand Seiko, do movements have any up finish. So what if you took these caliber types and were able to combine their upsides while eliminating their downsides? Bring in the spring drive. In essence, the spring drive uses mechanical power as a reserve of energy with the help of a mainspring. And with the freely rotating wheel known as a glide wheel at the far end of the gear train, it is able to create a small electrical charge with the help of a magnet at its axis in close proximity of copper wire. This then will send an electrical signal to an integrated circuit in quartz oscillator. From here, the IC is able to send back an electromagnetic pulse to the glide wheel with the help of the copper wire, acting as a frictionless brake to ensure the wheel rotates in a single direction eight times per second. In turn, this is going to create that effortless sweep that you are going to see on the front of the watch with the second hand, as well as making it possible to have incredible accuracy. Beyond this, the movement is stellar for what it's bringing to the table elsewhere, including a 72 hour power reserve and an accuracy rating of plus or minus one second per day or plus or minus 15 seconds a month. To add to all of this and why the 465 is compelling is that this is currently sitting at the entry door of pricing for a spring drive powered watch sitting under $5,000 new. Transitioning from the movement to the rest of the case, we have some very nice dimensions at 40 millimeters in diameter, 12.2 millimeters in thickness and a lug to lug of 46 millimeters. When factoring in all of these measurements into a singular package, I would say this watch wears slightly smaller than its proposed diameter, being assisted mightily from the more compact length of the case. 
Unlike the Snowflake and members of the Four Seasons collection, the 465 comes in stainless steel, showcasing a mix of surface finishes many have come to expect from the brand. The interior planes of the lugs and bracelet lengths are all brushed while the bezel, case sides, and aggressive line facet running the length of the case is in this highly reflective polish. The case similar to the movement assembly is done by hand in the Shinshu watch studio with each angle being carefully crafted giving the form to the silhouette. The crown of the three is of the screw down variety enabling 100 meters of water resistance while also being recessed slightly into the case offering protection without calling on the need for crown guards. Transitioning to the lugs, which are drilled by the way to enable strap changes, the width measures 20 millimeters holding a three length bracelet with those said lengths being of the screwed in variety. The tapered bracelet terminates at a dual button fold over lock sign clasp with the GS logo. And as is commonplace with this style of bracelet from Grand Seiko, there are no points of micro adjustment apart from a pair of half links. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is pretty hard to navigate what is available to you as a collector for Grand Seiko. So if you want to see what's available under $5,000 from the brand, we put together a helpful collection of watches on teddybaldeser.com. We're also an authorized dealer of Grand Seiko. In that collection, you'll see some watches like the SBGN 027, their Quartz True GMT with a stainless steel fixed bezel. Also the smaller case SBGX 353 with its blue snowflake dial. Further, the SBGM221, probably one of the best points of value from the brand with its ivory dial, GMT with the 9S66 mechanical caliber on the inside. And beyond that, we also have some dress pieces from the SBGW models and spring drive models like this 465 and the Soko Shadow that just made the cut under $5,000. Check out all of those in the description down below. We'll have a link to that collection. Now shifting back to the subject of this video with the 465, when this watch was released a couple of years ago, it was part of a cohort of pieces from the brand that had a similar layout, except had less involved dial textures. In the case of this 465, it has a sneaky level of depth to its surface that may get lost in the general product images that can only be fully appreciated in person or maybe with the help of a proper camera and light setup. Looking at that dial a little bit more specifically, we have this shimmering white silver made to represent the frosty terrain in the Shinshu region. The dial outskirt features a lined minute track in black resting in between the larger applied and faceted hour markers, each being skillfully cut by a technician meticulously. And if you are interested to see how this is done, I'll link down in the description to our tour of the Shinshu watch facility. The hands at center are also faceted sharply finished to a pristine degree with the second hand freely rotating over the dial with its sweep with the help of that unidirectionally rotating glide wheel. There are two complications, including a power reserve indication, which is fully wound when the hand aims towards the bottom of the arc scale with the frame date sitting at the three o'clock. From there, the only other dial detail to discuss is going to be the ink printed Grand Seiko logo at 12 and the spring drive at six with the cherry on top being the applied GS just beneath the double 12 o'clock index. So Grand Seiko has a wide range of watches that candidly is very hard to navigate. As mentioned in the beginning, there are three primary pillars of movements for the brand that in turn help to identify the key entry points as a collector you can navigate into. Their first category is 9F. Their premium quartz movements that are among the best and most accurate in the world, which also serve as the entry door to Grand Seiko more broadly. Next is the 9S mechanical calibers that are comprised of more traditional frequencies of the 9S6 at four hertz and the 9S A or eight that operate at five hertz. An established higher rate the brand has famously been known for since the 1960s. And the final pillar is spring drive, which does have a range within itself. Although the core engine of some of the most popular and best-selling models is the 9R65. And yes, it also finds its way into the least expensive spring drive. But make no mistake, it is a world-class caliber for what it delivers. So to find it in a watch like the SBGA465 makes for one of the most compelling points of value in the broader Grand Seiko lineup that probably not enough people know about. But all right guys, that's my closer look looking at the SBGA465. Have you ever heard of this piece? Have you ever looked or considered it? Leave a comment down below. Also, what do you think of this watch? Do you like it? Does it have enough to stand on its own to separate from other Grand Seiko watches? As I mentioned, sitting under $5,000 while getting a 9R65, pretty compelling if you look at the rest of Grand Seiko's lineup. Uh, this one does stand out. And I think in product images, you don't really get a full appreciation of how amazing this dial looks. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Really do appreciate that as well. Definitely check out teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also, if you have any further questions about watches or in the market for a watch, feel free to reach out to one of my team members that's gonna be on live chat basically 18 hours a day. So if you have any questions, good chance somebody's gonna be on live chat right now and can answer those questions in real time. But all right, guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.